Roll for Crit presents how to play Star Wars Outer Rim in five minutes or less or more. Star Wars Outer Rim is the game of smuggling, bounty hunting, and other shady business in the Star Wars universe. Designed by Corey Konichka and Tony Fanchi and published by Fantasy Flight Games. Your goal in Outer Rim is to become the most infamous ne'er-do-well in the galaxy by being the first player to gain 10 fame points. Each player will begin with a character, player board, a starter ship set to the side of your choice, some credits, and a databank card. This databank card will give you a starting job, bounty, or cargo, and tell you where on the board your character begins the game. You'll also have four reputation meters for the game's four factions. You'll begin the game with neutral reputation with all four, unless your character card says otherwise. Throughout the game, you could gain or lose reputation to become positive or negative with that faction, which could affect you in various ways. Your character will come with its own special abilities, as well as a personal goal that will give you a general direction to move in. If you complete that goal, you get to flip the card over, unlocking a new, more powerful ability. A player's turn is divided up into three phases. In the planning phase, you can take one of three options. The first and most useful is movement. You can move a number of spaces on the board up to your ship's printed movement value. The two main types of spaces on the board are planets and nav points. If you move onto the maelstrom space near the planet Kessel, or if you move onto a space with a patrol ship, you'll have to stop moving for that turn. However, if you have positive reputation with that patrol's faction, you can safely ignore them. If you don't want to move, you can use your planning phase to work a side job. For this, you simply receive 2,000 credits from the supply. Your third planning option is to recover all damage from your ship and or character card. Next up is the actions phase. Unlike in the planning phase, you can carry out multiple actions on your turn up to one time each. The most important action you can take is the market action. You can only visit the market if your character is on a planet space during this phase of the turn. The market is made up of six separate decks, each one specializing in different types of cards that you can purchase. Purchase. The top card of each deck will be face up. This is the only card from that deck you'll have the option of purchasing on your turn. However, before deciding, you may choose one of the six decks, move the top card face down at the bottom of the pile, and replace it by flipping over a new one from the top. You can only do this once per turn, and you don't have to buy the new card you reveal this way if you don't want to. Then you can spend credits equal to a card's printed cost in order to take it. If you don't have enough credits, you have the option of bartering by taking a card you purchased previously and subtracting its full value from the total cost of the new card to a minimum of zero. Discard that old card to the bottom of the appropriate pile and take the new one. You'll do this automatically when purchasing a new ship. You can only hold as many cards as you have slots for on your ship or character board, according to their specific labels. If you want to buy a card type and those slots are already full, you can discard something to make room for it. After buying a card, the next card from that market deck gets flipped face up. The majority of market cards also feature a faction symbol and number. This relates to one of those four patrol ships which start at the edges of the board. The patrol of the associated faction will move that number of spaces towards the active player immediately. If there's a choice of two paths, then the active player decides which one the patrol takes, unless the patrol is able to reach that player in that number of moves. Then it will always move to their space if possible. Having a patrol in your space could be bad, and we'll go over why later. Patrols only move in this way after gaining a card, not from discarding one from the top as part of your market action. Here's a brief summary of the different types of cards available in the market and what they do. Jobs. These will task you with visiting a specific location on the board and performing a series of challenges to complete in exchange for a reward, such as credits or fame points. Bounties. These cards give you the name of a specific contact that can be found on one of the contact tokens located next to planets. If you find one, you can try to fight them and kill them or capture them for a reward. Cargo cards can be delivered to a specified location in exchange for a reward. Gear cards are equipped by your character and provide them with upgrades that could come into play during combat or at other times, depending on its instructions. Mods are like gear for your ship and can also provide you with different types of upgrades. Crew cards can be hired to your ship and also provide you with new actions, abilities, and skills which we'll get to soon. Ships. When you buy a new ship, take the matching ship card and replace your old ship with it. Later ships have goals just like your characters, which can be completed in exchange for rewards. Aside from the market action, the action phase is also the time you'll be delivering bounties and cargo to planets if you have any matching your current location. Normally, you'll just discard them to the bottom of their respective decks in exchange for credits, unless the card has other instructions. And you can also use an action to trade any number of different cards of any type with another player in your space. On that note, at any time on your turn, you can trade credits with other players, no matter where you are, in exchange for goods or future promises, but these agreements are not binding, so be 
be careful with your money. Once you've taken all the actions you want to, you move on to the encounter phase, during which you'll have one encounter. First, check to see if you're in a space with a patrol ship. If you are, then check to see if you happen to have negative reputation with that ship's faction. If you do, then you'll be forced into a combat with that patrol. You could also choose to fight the patrol as your encounter, even if you don't have to. There are two types of combat in Outer Rim, ground and ship combat, but both work the same way. When fighting a patrol, that would be a ship combat, but usually a card will specify which type you're engaged in. To fight, roll a number of dice equal to the combat value of your ship or your character as printed on their card. This symbol is a hit, worth one point of damage. This one is a crit, worth two points of damage. This one is a focus symbol, which doesn't do anything by itself, but might come into play from various cards or abilities. You might also roll a blank, which does nothing. After rolling and calculating your damage, your opponent will do the same based on their combat value. Whoever rolls a higher number of damage is the winner of the fight, with ties going to the attacker. After a combat, the amount of damage rolled will be dealt to you or your ship regardless of who won. The results of winning or losing a combat will differ depending on the situation. Usually it's printed on a card, but in the case of a patrol, if you lose, simply move them one space away from you. If you win a fight with a patrol, the token is removed, you gain the printed reward, and the next level of that faction's patrol moves onto the board. The fourth level of each patrol stack is invincible, and will automatically defeat a player if they do combat with it. After defeating a patrol, you also lose one reputation with that faction, because you know you've murdered some of them. If there's no patrol in your space or you don't want to fight one during your encounter phase, you can instead draw an encounter card from the appropriate deck. Each section of the board has a related encounter deck. Draw the top card, find the section that relates to the planet you're on, read it out loud, and follow its instructions. Some encounters provide you with secrets. Don't read these out loud. Instead, they stay face down, hidden in front of you, until they tell you to reveal them and carry out their effects. If you're not on a planet, you can instead draw an encounter card from the Nav Points encounter deck, which covers any Nav Point on the board. Each planet also has two contact tokens. As your encounter, you can flip one of these over, then find the databank card matching its printed number and follow its instructions. This may allow you to hire that contact as a crew member. If that contact is one you have a bounty card for, you can decide to fight them instead, and if you win, choose to eliminate or capture them for delivery on a specific planet. If a contact is ever hired or killed, their token token is removed from the board. It's possible for one player to have a crew card that someone else wants for a bounty. In that case, one player can use their encounter step to attempt to fight that crew member if they're in the same space as them. The player in charge of that crew can choose to step in, in which case the two players will fight each other instead. This is one of the few ways it's possible to fight directly with your opponents in-game. Various cards throughout the game will provide you with alternate options to take during each of the three phases on your turn, which you'll recognize by the name of that phase in bold before the card's text. For example, the encounter phase is also when you'll attempt to complete a job card if you're in the relevant location. Jobs usually require you to draw databank cards and follow the steps listed on them in order to complete them. Often these steps will involve combat or skill tests. What's a skill test? Well, characters and crew members all have one or more skills listed at the bottom of their cards. So a card might ask you to make a skill test using influence, tech, or piloting. To do so, you'll roll two dice, and you'll need at least one success to pass the test. If you don't have the aforementioned skill on any of your cards, then only the critical hit symbol counts as a success. If you do have that skill, then either of the two hit symbols count. And if you have the skill listed more than once, Focus symbols will also count as successes. The results of the test will depend on its context, so read the card to find out what happens. If at any point your character or ship have damage tokens on them equal to or greater than your health or hull values, you have been defeated. You lose 3,000 credits and discard any secrets you may have had. At the start of your next turn, you'll have to use your planning phase to recover to clear yourself of all damage. Continue taking turns until one player reaches 10 fame points. As soon as that happens, they win and the game ends. In conclusion, Move, complete jobs and bounties, deliver cargo, get paid, buy stuff, make a name for yourself. That's Star Wars Outer Rim in a nutshell. Did you get all that?